Kia ora, e te whanau. Yeah, got that wrong then. Kia ora e te whanau. that's kind of hello family. Family would include all of you, so casual viewers, subscribers, patrons, supporters, welcome, happy new year. Um, really excited to be shooting some videos tonight. I've been chomping at the bit to, to do this one. Um, this is an interesting one because it's a crossover between two different threads, uh, two different series that I've been running. So uh, for those of you that have been, uh, that may not have been following the channel, I run a, uh, I'm running a series called Psych Songs, which is all about songs where uh, the lyrics or the meaning, or maybe even the mood of the song says something interesting about psychology or about emotions. And the other thread that I've been running in other series is on neurodiversity. And this is where the two meet, because there's a song which, uh, to me, speaks about neurodiversity. And uh, in particular, pathological demand avoidance syndrome, which you may not have heard of. In fact, you probably haven't heard of, unless you have an interest in these things. So we'll get into what pathological demand avoidance syndrome is. Uh, first of all, I'll tell you what the song is. The song is Imaginary by Evanescence. So it comes off their first album, which is called Fallen. I absolutely love this album. I, I have to admit, I've not kept in kept up with Evanescence. I did listen to their second album, uh, which I thought was, was good. Um, it didn't seem to have the same pain in it as the first album <laughs> my sense was that the first album was all about kind of pain and angst and trauma and the second album was all about kind of empowerment and recovery um, which is kind of great but I kind of I, I kind of like the pain and the trauma <laughs> I kind of <laughs> I find it a very emotive sort of cathartic kind of album to listen to Fallen by so this is the one that that um, brought them to fame so um, Wake Me Up uh, was um, was one of the songs, one of the famous songs on that, that album. But they're all crackers, and I have uh, have some thoughts about maybe featuring another one of the songs of that album, which to me speaks about narcissistic abusive partners. So uh, so look out for more if you like Evanescence. So, Imaginary by Evanescence, um, beautiful, haunting, melancholy track um i will read you the lyrics um but really you need to have a listen to this um it's it's, uh, it's plentiful on youtube if you if you just google imaginary um uh, evanescence on youtube you'll come across loads of versions of it including one version which is the original version not the version that was on the album i'll try and put that on the on the information below for you i try not to put links to uh songs on youtube because i'm kind of frightened that i I'm, I'm probably kind of um completely wrong in my assumption but i have a fear that i could be kind of caught by proxy by the kind of copyright police for putting links out there to, to things like that but i'm probably being overly cautious with that um but I have put a one uh, a link to the uh, the original version because because uh, that's quite unique and with with um, you know worth being steered towards. So okay, I linger in the doorway of alarm clocks. I'm reading the page. That's why I'm looking at you. Of alarm clocks screaming monsters calling my name. Let me stay where the wind will whisper to me, where the raindrops as they're falling tell a story. And then the next is the chorus. In my field of paper flowers and candy clouds of lullaby, I lie inside myself for hours and watch my purple sky fly over me. Don't say I'm out of touch with this rampant chaos, your reality. I know well what lies beyond my sleeping refuge, the nightmare I built my own world to escape. And that's the chorus again. And then the final verse. Swallowed up in the sound of my screaming, cannot cease for the fear of silent nights. Oh, how I long for the deep sleep dreaming, the goddess of imaginary light. Okay, that's great, isn't it? It's good. It's great words, isn't it? But it's not just the words, it's the mood of the song. Makes me think about pathological demand avoidance. But <laughs> what I find interesting is having looked at some of the uh, YouTube channels and websites where people have discussed this song, it reminds a lot of people of a lot of things. <laughs> so uh, among the things that have been listed are schizophrenia, uh, disassociative identity disorder, 
certainly would apply to depression. In fact, I think this, this could apply to any, uh, not necessarily psychiatric or mental health condition, but any anything that uh, anything that causes a degree of pain in life for which you feel you need to escape escape into fantasy and I think we all do that at some point or other so to get things very clear before people kind of send me lots of comments I'm not saying that uh, who are the songwriters here says Amy Lee uh, Ben Moody David Hodges I'm not saying that that these uh, very talented writers and and musicians wrote this song about pathological demand avoidance but what I am saying is it describes it rather beautifully and it's a good opportunity to talk about something that's very seldom talked about uh, that being pathological demand avoidance syndrome or PDA as it's sometimes called now if you look at PDA you probably won't find very much um, what you need to do is is make sure you put it in in full because PDA also stands for um, public displays of affection um, so if you if you just put PDA into YouTube you'll kind of um, I did this when I was first looking into it uh, and watch these really long videos thinking well when are people going to get to the point they keep talking about kind of well, you know whether they hold their boyfriend's hand I thought what's this got to do with pathological demand avoidance pathological demand avoidance is a or believed to be a form of autism and it's a kind of form of uh, often high functioning autism so it's very similar to Asperger's or what they, they call high functioning autism but it's also very different so it's an interesting one so lots of people who um, who display lots of kind of uh, autistic type behaviors but don't identify with Asperger's syndrome may have PDA and it's quite a controversial diagnosis so it's not in the uh, diagnostic manuals uh, the two big di manuals that doctors and psychiatrists uh, use across the globe don't as yet include this um, so some clinicians support this diagnosis some don't uh, so it's a controversial obscure which of course is why I'm interested in it because I'm, I love all that kind of thing the other reason I'm interested in it is because I think I have it uh, I don't have a formal diagnosis but having a formal diagnosis is almost impossible to get really it's very very difficult depends where you live in the world uh, so pathological demand avoidance syndrome now kind of you know first thoughts on that when you hear the name you might think well that sounds just like somebody that's a lazy bastard um, well let me go into it in a bit more depth and I've got a, a little prompt here on the left so I'm just going to be staring away from you it's not me being autistic and avoiding eye contact uh, so the, the key and this this is me quoting the National Autistic Society um, in the UK is that what they're called is it the proper title I think it is I'll check later I'll put it in there I'll put a link to this down, down below so you can look this up so the distinctive features of a demand avoided profile include resists and avoid the avoids the ordinary demands of life. Okay, and that's the key one. That's the, that's where the name comes from. Uses social strategies as part of avoidance, e.g., distracting or giving excuses. Appears sociable, but lacks understanding. Experiences excessive mood swings and impulsivity. Appears comfortable in role play and pretense and displays obsessive behavior that is often focused on other people. So they're really interesting cluster of symptoms, I think. You know, they're very, very different to Asperger's, but they're, but somebody with Asperger's will kind of, you know, will probably have a lot of overlaps with somebody with, with PDA because it is an autistic spectrum condition or believed to be an autistic spectrum condition. I've got some theories about it myself. I think it's, uh, I think it's biopsychosocial uh, in that it's got a biological component as an genetic component. Neurodiversity means a differently wired brain, so that's the bio bit. Uh, the psycho and the social social side of it, well, I think that uh, people, uh, people with this are likely also to have an avoidant attachment style. We talked a bit about attachment in another video. Um, we will probably do a video on attachment at some point because it's so important attachment is all about the effects of your the caregiving that you receive in the early years of your life and an avoidant attachment uh, is a kind of is where a, a, a child 
wants uh, people to get out of their face, really. <laughs> an, anxious, an anxious attachment is kind of very needy and clingy. And an avoidant one is, is avoid, well, avoidant. It's kind of, you know, back off. You know, so, so it's kind of um, uh, formed by the kind of parenting that, that took place. And also, I think uh, there's an element of dyspraxia. And we talk about dyspraxia in my other series. Dyspraxia uh, is what they used to call clumsy child syndrome, which is kind of you know not rather pejorative. And it doesn't just apply to children because it continues. I have dyspraxia, which is interesting. Dyspraxia literally means difficult to do. So dis is uh, difficult or problematic. Praxia as in practice, uh, you know, doing things, practical. So difficulty in doing. So dyspraxia so i have a theory that pda uh in some cases perhaps not necessarily in all can be a combination of avoidant attachment style uh, uh an autism condition and dyspraxia which means that physical tasks are more difficult for someone to do than they would be for somebody that's neurotypical and hasn't got the condition so I'm going to have to leave you with a cliffhanger here because I've reached the 11, 11 minutes and seconds mark here. I need to keep the video short so I can upload them. So this is going to run into a part two. So uh, see you very soon.